So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Sorry for the delay. So, welcome back after uh, uh, a few months. <laughs> Uh, so this is our first workshop uh, in 2022. So uh, welcome, Ajit, and uh, I give the floor to Abdul Aziz to introduce him. Okay, because he initiated this uh, session. So I give to Abdul Aziz to uh, give an introduction. Uh, thank you, Libin. Thank you, folks. It's a pleasure of mine to meet everybody, you know, back after a long time. So uh, let us uh, welcome Mr. Uh, you know, Ajit, Ajit Everester from Qatar. He's actually working in Qatar and uh, he's one of the finest, uh, you know, astrophotographer in this region with all the settings and all the equipments. And uh, amazingly, he's shooting most of his images uh, from the city itself. And uh, he's one of the, you know, uh, very renowned, uh, you know, professional, uh, HSC professional, HSC manager working in Qatar, as well as he's a, a speaker, uh, you know, of to several universities and several uh, educational institutions and several other uh, photography and, uh, you know, astrophotography, you know, astrology related, uh, you know, uh, events. So I really feel that it is a luck that we got him. And also my personal wish is to uh, have uh, Ajit not online, in person, back here in Oman with us. And I'm looking forward to that as well. One day, I hope it will happen. And uh, so I wish you all the best, uh, Mr. Ajit. And uh, this is uh, maybe your first time you are meeting our group FSO. Uh, and I, I welcome you. And as well as I wish you all the best to everybody. And uh, this is a wonderful chance for all of you to ask maximum questions and, uh, you know, also trying to understand, uh, you know, maximum about astrophotography from Ajit. His experience is vast. I request all of you to go through his profile, which is, will be shared in the group. Uh, and you will find amazing, amazing images, nebulas, uh, galaxies, and uh, different kind of, you know, uh, uh, deep sky objects. And those are imaged in, uh, such a brilliant quality. It's not just uh, astrophotography pictures. So I request all of you to go go to those uh, you know uh, images and watch them and uh, see how um, amazing those pictures are. Thank you very much. I will come back once again, Ajit. Ajit, over to you. It's been a long time, you know. Like after in the lockdown, you know, uh, this online presentations are becoming. Uh, interesting, but I really um, will be meeting you all soon offline. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Abdulaziz, for uh, giving me an opportunity to introduce myself to the Oman photography community. I have been a member of uh, FSO Musket a long time since maybe FSO Musket have started. I think a little bit, uh, it's yeah. been almost 10 years, right? Yeah, yeah, 20, uh, yeah. 2012, yes. I yeah, think, uh, yeah, I forgot to tell Lanchit uh, came here uh, in Oman, I think uh, probably five years back or something. And that time he was connected with us and he was asking for which places to visit because that time he was more into wild photography. And uh, he was asking the places and also we got connected. Anyway, it's good to uh, connect with him again. Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, it was like uh, six, seven years back uh, yeah. when I was, you know, very seriously doing wildlife photography and I visited Oman. I have been to uh, the sun farms, yeah, in uh, Sohar. Sohar, Sohar. Yeah, Sohar and uh, some other parks near Muscat. I really don't know the names of the places. Few people from FSO Muscat only, they have uh, taken me. It was a good opportunity for me to explore. I really loved the experience uh, which I got in Oman. So now, after uh, four years, 2017, I've since 2017 into astrophotography. Now again, I got an uh, opportunity to meet you all uh, through same FSO Musket and to introduce astrophotography uh, to. Uh, the photographers community in uh, Muscat. 
as uh, abdullah says i he mentioned that i am photographing all my images from uh, the brightest sky in uh, qatar actually my home i live in the middle of the city and i have my observatory set up in the rooftop of my house and i am photographing from this uh, bottle nine region actually we, we call it the white zone in uh, astrophotographer's words it is the white zone and uh, you barely see like hardly four or five stars in the sky and uh, uh, thanks to the technology thanks to the filters uh, filter manufacturers you know like uh, three nano fil nanometer filters five nanometer filters so that we could uh, enjoy the marvels of the deep sky from uh, the middle of the cities anyhow uh, so let us start with the session actually uh, from uh, astrophotography see astrophotography is nothing but like photographing the sky whatever it may be it is uh, stars planets uh, moon uh, nebulae galaxies whatever it is when if you start shooting the sky you become an astrophotographer so in that uh, in that case uh, each and every one of us you know all the photographers at least we might have uh, photographed the moon ones or we have uh, photographed the milky way ones or uh, star trail somehow we will be uh, we might have done astrophotography uh, but here we will be uh, going more deep into how we can do it a little more professionally you now this astrophotography has been uh, more into the technical part of uh, photography and it has not been so much popular among uh, indian uh, photographers because of its technical dif uh, difficulties and the uh, expense in nature you know now uh, in the current season actually the equipment are all becoming a little more cheaper and it is more available for the common uh, man like you know like so otherwise we photographers like us we could not have excelled in this uh, career uh, for um, deep space imaging you know like uh, what like let me we need some of the equipments to um track the sky see usually when we star shoot the for stars when we photograph stars it depends on the focal length of our equipment like of the lens uh, it will get uh, star trails or like you know and focal focal length of the lens and the exposure length it is uh, you know directly proportional because with that you know you may get star trails you know like my images i am shooting like an exposure length of uh, 15 to 20 minutes for an exposure so in that case like when you uh, expose for longer you will get star trails so to avoid that we will be having a star tracker or a guiding setup so we will be doing a little bit of de uh, detail in about those equipment uh, in this presentations. Uh, so I think uh, I have to share the screen right there. Yeah. This screen sharing is available or not? Screen sharing is available, right? Yes, yes. Uh, you are using a separate, uh, you are uh, doing from this one, right? You are co-host, so you can do it. Okay. Because uh, for uses, ah, I... Okay. Yes, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. So this will be like, uh, this will be a session which covers the basics of uh, imaging in astrophotography. Okay, so but uh, still, when we say basics of uh, astrophotography, we will be covering uh, almost all the fields, other than the research-oriented stuff. Like you now, we will be covering the uh, Milky Way wide field, 
how to uh, photograph the Milky Way and uh, solar, lunar, and the planetary imaging, and uh, the basics of deep sky, deep sky imaging. Uh, so, as uh, Abdulaziz mentioned, that I am a HSC engineer by profession, and I represent a company called Toshima as HSC manager. And photography has been a passion for me since 2010, like when my when I when my daughter was born, you know, I took my first camera. Gone into uh, wildlife photography very deep. Had a still have a very big collection of uh, photography gears in Nikon. I'm a hardcore Nikonian. Then later I came to uh, Fuji. I moved to Fuji, like but still I have only a street uh, photography kit up kit for. Uh, Fuji. Then 2013, I started photographing my first uh, Milky Way. But you know, at uh, that time, it was not a very big popular uh, imaging, you know, in, for while uh, for uh, Milky Way, but because people are more uh, familiar about the star trails. So star trails we used to uh, photograph since 2013. And 2013 is the first time I photographed Milky Way and it was awesome. Uh, then, still again, I was continued pursuing wildlife photography only. After uh, 2017, yeah, 2017, I bought my first telescope when I when my daughter asked me for to see the planets. You know, being a photographer, I thought like you know when when I saw the planets through the telescope, I was so fascinated to photograph it. Then I tried with my DSLR connected to the telescope. Uh, I couldn't image it properly. You know, the focusing, the settings, it is not like, unlike our uh, regular photography, it's not from a single click we image planets or uh, the moon. Even the moon, we will not be uh, photographing like uh, how we traditionally do. So I will give some uh, pro tips how to do it here. So from that, uh, actually, you know, like the, I came to know about this deep sky, like nebulas and uh, um, galaxies that we can photograph only after uh, buying the telescope. Before that, I was having no idea that we can uh, photograph the deep sky through, uh, you know, from a normal setup like from uh, home. So I was thinking that it was it could be possible only through. Uh, big observatories and uh, very big telescopes are like, you know, different kind of uh, technically high skilled people. But when I started uh, learning uh, how, you know, when I started seeing the images through over the internet, I had a curiosity that we can uh, to pursue it. Like, you know, so I started learning it and it was not that so hard. Uh, imaging the deep sky. If you have uh, proper equipment and if you have proper skills and mainly, you know, time and patience, you can, uh, it is very, very easy to photograph uh, the deep sky. The equipment, uh, yeah, uh, we will cover that. Okay. So this is about me. Then, um, let's see, like, how. Uh, Yeah, the basic requirements for astrophotography will be like uh, our uh, regular stock DSLR or a cooled camera or a modified uh, DSLR with a cooling system or a astro dedicated astrophotography camera, anything could be. But depending on uh, your camera, the image quality and the image uh, yeah, image quality will change and the colors will be different depending on the camera which you use. Uh, is, uh, for example, if you are using a stock uh, DSLR, um, it is like you know, very less of the hydrogen alpha, like, you know, the IR infrared light, which will be like, which is abundant in the sky, will be, will not be seen because we have a, um, 
IR block filter in front of our uh, stock DSLRs. So now you can remove the IR block filter from your uh, from your camera so that you get a red image which uh, says that you know like it will be like more infrared light coming inside your sensor. But again, you know, when you start exposing it more, you get star trails and uh, the exposure lengths will be different. And you cannot uh, photograph uh, um, even a Milky Way without a tripod. So you should have a sturdy tripod. And of course, the eye of the camera is a lens or a telescope. Now this is uh, through which the light comes inside. And uh, planning is like, you know, like uh, my last session was like, I was photographing, a, um, I am actually still not completed yet. My uh, recent imaging is something called a spider nebulae. It is um, in, uh, uh, you can say like the IC417, that's a number. It is, uh, it is the listed number, IC417. It is called the Spider Nebulae. I am photographing it. I have actually, my target is like 50 hours of imaging of this uh, particular, of this target. Uh, but, you know, I started on 20th of February. I did imaging till 4th. Then again, all of a sudden, clouds came in, dust, sandstorm, everything was coming up. So I couldn't uh, image a photograph for last four or five days. I am expecting the sky to be clear by tomorrow night. So I'll be continuing it. So this is what you have to plan, actually. You have to plan uh, how many hours you want to shoot a target, how, uh, what is the weather conditions in your uh, what like what is the weather conditions in your uh, area locate locality where uh, where from you are photographing how what is the light pollution level in your uh, locality so that accordingly you have to uh, change your exposure lengths uh, like that and apart from that you need plenty of passion and patience for uh, astrophotography uh, because you know, earlier when I used to go for uh, wildlife uh, trips, when you carry, if you carry a, uh, carry two, three, four, 64 GB or 128 GB cards, uh, you know, in a one week trip, you will come back, uh, come back with all these memory cards full of images. But here, you, you know, as I said, you know, like my session, my last, uh, the current recent, uh, current target started on 20th of February. And still not completed it, and I have collected the data of almost uh, uh, eight GB, but still, you know, yet to collect more. So to see the result of an image, you you are waiting. Actually, I'm waiting in this. In my case, actually, I'm waiting for almost like now uh, twenty days. Uh, still not completed it. I'm expecting in another two three days I can complete the image. So 20, 22 days, you have to wait to see an image. So that much passion you need and that much patience you need to do astrophotography. And apart from that, actually, you know, this can be done in a way, in this way also. Otherwise, like if you have a dark sky, I have uh, wondered about the dark sides of Oman when I came last time. Oman is such a beautiful, uh, Oman has such beautiful night, uh, night sky, clear skies, and uh, so many uh, dark sites, which is, which can be easily approachable, uh, you know, in very short time, maybe like 30 minutes, one hour drive, you can access a lot of bottle one skies, which the darkest skies in ever. You know? uh, when we tell about that, we will uh, talk about the uh, dark sides, you know. So we have covered about camera, telescope, mount, or fashion planning for these things. And I have mentioned about the stock DSLRs and uh, 
um, and this uh, the, the cameras dedicated astrophotography cameras right so this is how it looks like the left hand side the left one is the stock dslr and the right one is the ccd or uh, no this is a cmos camera this is uh, zwo this the brand of this camera is called as zwo and it's unlike uh, a modified dslr or a modified dslr with the can uh, with the cooling system this is a dedicated uh, astrophotography camera um, and it has same like you know crop sensor full frame um, same like our dslrs because only the sensor is changing here now the system everything will be same but according to the size of the sensor you get the cameras in different prices okay i am using a camera called uh, zwo asi 1600 it's a monochrome camera and uh, i'm using different filters to make my images colored so this again we will come when we are uh, going to the equipments okay so this is the uh, two types of cameras which we are using for uh, imaging one is a dslr and uh, one is a cmos and ccds so tripod and tracking mounts for uh, milky way for wide field photographs we can have a we must have a uh, study tripod because our exposure lens will not be uh, going beyond 30 seconds or uh, 30 35 seconds based on the focal length of our uh, lens which we are using so when you are having a 500 mm lens if you are shoot, going to plan to shoot uh, the sky with a 500 mm lens the maximum exposure length which is allowed will be like one second so that you don't get a trail in the stars but unfortunately in one second we will not get anything whether it's just only a one one or two stars when the exposure length length increases to say 10 seconds using a 10 a 500 mm lens then of course you will get a little bit of light inside but unfortunately the stars will get uh, become uh, star trails actually the the movement of the stars will be uh, prominently visible so to avoid that we are using two types of trackers either a very basic one with uh, called as a guider or a tracker sky tracker or a proper tracking mount it is a equatorial mount. we call it as, it is called as the german equatorial mount and uh, there are some other uh, brands coming up like you know some other uh, type of mounts called as uh, you know cem mounts okay cem gem so but all of these are equatorial mounts okay the second one actually in, the, in this image is the sky guider it is uh, the brand is ioptron actually i use this ioptron uh, sky guider pro version this one actually the payload capacity is like four kilograms the maximum allowable payload but uh, with a counterweight same like this you can use it like you no know, you can push the uh, guider to track it like until maybe six kilos or six kilos maximum. Uh, otherwise, you will, you know, like you will get your uh, guider uh, you know, damaged because the motor will not be able to track the sky properly. So, it, uh, either your mount will get damaged or your uh, image will get, get, get damaged. Um, this is a the, the sky guider is a very basic tracker this don't need a very uh, professional setup guide guiding but unfortunately this can track uh, with a very less payload of four uh, kilograms to four to six kilograms and uh, i have shot milky ways i have photographed milky ways with the tracker and i have exposed to uh, eight minutes of one exposure length without any star trails. I was so happy and I'm so happy with this uh, particular mount and not only this one, I have tried 
other uh, sky trackers also but actually this is not a marketing session for this one okay because this one this kind of trackers are available in the market uh, like for example ioptron they have a um, sky guider pro sky tracker is there then uh, sky watcher um, that they have a sky guide uh, sky guider um, yeah ioptron also they have a sky well, sky sky watcher also they have a sky guider so these are not very expensive setups with your available um, camera and uh, lens if you are investing an added of like approximately around 500 to 600 dollars you can buy a setup like this as a, like a sky guider so you can photograph the um, milky way or even with the, the deep sky with this depending on the uh, focal lens and in the sky there is various uh, locations where you can do wide field deep space imaging like you know um orion nebula the hosset okay that chain the markarian chains so this can be photographed with um, um, our normal lenses you know like i have photographed the sky with 50 mm uh, properly like you know they say that 135 mm is a very optimal uh, focal length for uh, photographing the wide field targets nebulae and galaxies with the stock uh, dslr we can do that but one thing is like you know you will not get the uh, infrared uh, light in your sensor because of the infrared block filters the last one which i have is the equatorial mount this is the german equatorial mount actually this this is the one which i use actually this this particular mount is in my uh, observatory this is a sky watcher eq6r pro mount and uh, the payload is approximately around uh, 20 yeah they, the, the manufacturer recommended is 20 kilograms is the payload uh, of course when you have a refractor or uh, when you have a newtonian of course newtonians are very little bit little more heavy the telescopes so but refractors are that but not heavy but your entire gear uh, will be coming up around 10 to 15 kilograms so this mount is little more very on the professional side uh, for amateurs like me you know it's a little fun when you go for like a little more pro then you may need a bigger mount with more payload capacities and uh, uh, longer focal length telescopes and, and different kind of guiding setups with off-axis guiders like that that we will discuss see in this uh, mounts do you does anybody have any questions in this mounts anybody Aziz, why? You have, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, just, yeah, just. Yeah, nobody has any questions, right? In this? Yeah, so for now, because they are just building the ideas. So, okay, let's fine. continue. Yeah. Uh, so, as I said, you know, earlier, like, you know, when in astrophotography, we did, we uh, divided like, um, wide field, solar, lunar, and uh, planetary, and deep, space, uh, deep sky imaging. In wide field, this can be, this could be either like, uh, um, what do you say, like Milky Ways, or wide field targets, like as I said, the Markarian chains, or the uh, Orion dust cloud, uh, nebulae cloud, or the Hossett cloud. Um, there are so many in the, in the sky to, to which which can be used as the which can which can be wide field targets you know the there are so many targets Let, let's name it later you know then solar imaging and lunar imaging solar imaging is entirely a different topic actually lunar is a little bit more easier but solar actually the techniques will be the same the similar one 
but uh, the equipment you use will be a little more uh, different because solar uh, sun when you are photographing sun sun is little uh, it's a very bright target and it can easily damage your camera so we have uh, special filters solar filters actually uh, people can, uh, say that ND filters will be good, but uh, I will never recommend uh, ND filters for uh, solar imaging. Um, we are, when you are doing solar photo, solar imaging, you have to properly concentrate, uh, with, properly use the recommended uh, solar filters or solar telescopes, or else you can convert your telescopes to um, solar telescopes add by adding additional uh, you know add-ons to the telescope so there are there is something called uh, a quark which you can uh, connect it to the telescope telescope so that your uh, telescope will stop all the um, you know light coming from the sun and you can get the proper exposure and again this has two types like you know your chromosphere and prominences there is two types of uh, uh, telescopes coming up you know when where you are uh, for which will allow you to see the um, chromosphere and the prominences chromosphere is the, is the surface of the sun where you will find the sun spots and uh, all those de de details in the in the sun and prominences is the uh, you know the, the the solar flare which comes out of the sun from the, the projections of the uh, you know from the sun so this provenances can be photographed even with the uh, telescope, which can be used for uh, chromosphere, but it is a little more uh, a different technique where you photograph the provenances separately and uh, the chromosphere separately, and you uh, you know uh, stack them together and process them, you know, and add colors like that in that. And uh, lunar imaging is photographing the moon. Planetary imaging is like, you know, photographing the planets. Again, the planets are uh, different in sizes, starting from Mercury to uh, Pluto. I am still not considering uh, Pluto from the planetary system. I, because recent, now actually Pluto is not in the, planetary system, it's called as the dwarf planet. Actually, it is still Neptune, but the commonly uh, photographed targets are Mars, Venus, uh, Jupiter, Saturn, actually these four. Then uh, Uranus is not that very common for photography and uh, Neptune also. Uh, Mercury, almost it comes in the early morning along with the sun so it is also a little bit uh, harder target the rest of the things are uh, easy targets uranus actually it is possible to photograph but you need uh, very longer uh, focal lengths maybe like at least uh, uh, 3500 4000 mm uh, telescopes so that you can see it a little bit added with your uh, cameras, crop sensors, the focal length increases, and uh, maybe at least like 35, 40,000 mm, you can photograph Uranus a little bit good. But you don't need that much of uh, focal length to photograph Jupiter and Saturn. Jupiter and Saturn are very prominent in sky. Jupiter is very big and Saturn is also reasonably big so that we can photograph Jupiter and Saturn easily from the sky. And Venus is also the brightest uh, planet. That is also very easy to photograph. And deep sky imaging is, as I said, like, you know, it can be wide field or uh, telescopic, but this requires entirely different set of uh, gears and entirely different set of uh, imaging sessions you know or cycle the filters what you use everything is totally different from uh planetary of course the telescope and the camera you can use it but the um, techniques are entirely different white field photography is 
Milky Way photography, usually we call, uh, we used to photograph the Milky Way as Whitefield very commonly. Uh, this is photograph. This image is photographed with a uh, fourteen mm lens, and it is still a stack of I think panorama of three uh, images on a full frame full frame stock camera. But this is not a tracked one. This is uh, a regular uh, photography with uh, on a tripod. This is uh, I think uh, I was photographing with. The exposure length around 25 seconds at ISO, maybe 1600. That is my usual uh, ISO, which I photograph uh, Milky Ways. This one is again uh, 14 mm. Uh, this, of course, this is also not a uh, this is not a tracked image. Okay, this the Milky was Milky Way was so superb. This one was photographed from uh, bottle one sky from Ladakh. So the sky is so pristine there. And uh, actually, in Oman, you have bottle one skies. You can photograph Milky Way in this similar. We don't need to track the sky to uh, get an image like this in Oman. Oman is such a beautiful country with about such a beautiful sky. And uh, here, the first and second images are uh, again not tracked. The third image is a tracked image and a stacked image. Actually, this is a Vertorama. This is this, uh, the third Milky Way is been photographed with a 50 mm lens in a crop sensor body and tracked the sky for uh, four minutes. For each image, this is a two. Yeah, this two images are there in this two image vectorama. Four uh, minutes tracked each uh, uh, on a sky um, sky guider pro. Yeah, the, the one which I saw showed it actually. Uh, Ioptron sky guider pro. Uh, maybe I can show you uh, um, the the sky guider. Uh, so can you give me a second? I'll just bring that. See, this is the Sky Guider Pro. This is a very compact system uh, with which you can photograph the deep uh, night sky. And uh, this is the one which, which I use. Actually, uh, same like this, you have uh, Sky Watcher mounts also. The, those are also those are also very beautiful ones. Okay, this is iOpton. Then. Uh, Yeah, this is another one. This is also photographed with uh, 14 mm lens and I think it can be four. And uh, you know, the, the, the colors in this image, I love a lot. When I was uh, initially doing uh, star trails, actually I was uh, not knowing that, you know, initially my images will be like all white stars. Uh, all the stars will be white in color and uh, the circles will be in white in color. But then I was doing a bit of research on this, uh, how to bring out this, because not all the stars are uh, white, you know, like not all the stars are white stars. You have red stars, you have blue stars, you have orange stars, you know, like there are so many according to the intensity of the light which comes from there. There are cool stars and warm stars, hot stars. So, for uh, bringing out the colors, actually, it is good to keep your ISO very less, maybe like less than 400 ISO, and uh, use your dynamic range to boost the colors. When you are, if you are using, usually people, we used to do for uh, star trails at least like you know 1000, 1200. But uh, I prefer not to go for 1,000, 1,200. I, I prefer to keep the ISO very low so that you get the colors of uh, the stars in the sky when doing the white field, you know, this um, star trails. Solar and lunar imaging. This one is not, this, this is, 
um, the photo of a sun which has been photographed from the midday, maybe around 12 o'clock with a solar filter and but uh, not with the solar telescope of course i actually i don't own a solar telescope but i'm planning to upgrade uh, by one but uh, with a solar filter you can uh, photograph like this and yeah this this is from a lunar eclipse this is the surface of uh, moon Now, uh, there is a tip for uh, lunar, solar and lunar imaging. Maybe like most of us, we are not going to do so, solar imaging now. But moon, we can practice it very easily. Usually, we will uh, go for, maybe you can take a note on this, okay? Usually, when we are uh, doing um, imaging the moon, we used to go for single, single exposure shots, right? But actually, moon is a very fast moving object it is similar like when we are uh, photographing the supercars maybe like it's very fast the moon is also moving very fast so when you are photographing the uh, moon at, at, at all exposures it will give us a small you know like motion blur. you will not get the image very sharp maybe a single uh, image will not produce a very sharp image and you will not get enough data to, to show all the details in that maybe something like this so for that what we do is you know, we are uh, we are going to take short video clips maybe like all our cameras will be like you know having 30 frames per second 60 frames per second so focus the moon take a video a short video, a AVA clip, maybe 30 seconds, 40 seconds. How many frames we will get? At least like, you know, with a this, with this 10 frame speed, 10 into 30 seconds is 300 frames. We can get 300 frames of the uh, moon. And now we are going to process the video in a particular software, in a separate software, which will uh, which what it will do is this particular software will uh, convert all these frames to each photographs and all this 30 second frames like 300 frames will be stacked one above the other so that you get sharper image. okay for that what i use is uh, the software called the auto stacker uh, you can uh, note it down actually this maybe i can give it in the chat box the name this auto packet okay and uh registrax these are the softwares which i use for uh, solar imaging and the uh, solar lunar and the planetary imaging okay so what we are going to do is we are going to take a short video clip of av um, yeah avi file then in uh, Auto stack it. We are opening the file, and this actually auto stack it and registrax are very straight uh, forward softwares. You don't have any complexity in this in, in processing, and these are free softwares which is available. It is open source, and you can easily download from the internet. And it is not very heavy softwares also. Okay. So you can open the video clip in um, auto stack it, and uh, that will do the job of stacking all the three hundred frames to. Uh, produce a single image and from that 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 result can be brought to registrax and registrax you can uh, sharpen the uh, details do do the noise uh, reduction um, you know all those things you can image scale it there so all those uh, details you can do it in uh, registrax so that's again also registrax is also a very straightforward soft, uh, software uh, maybe you have some sliders to adjust that's it and uh, to boost the uh, details and uh, you can reduce the noise in that but it will take a little bit uh, time in that because to learn it because to it uh, it will uh, separate the layers into like maybe an image to uh, like seven six or seven layers so that each layer of uh, 
the data will be adjusted, have to be adjusted a little uh, sensitively. So this one, it will take a little bit of time. Uh, with experience, you can uh, gain it very easily. Then, similar now, actually, we'll be having the planetary imaging. Planetary imaging is similar, same like our uh, lunar imaging. Uh, same, but one, only only difference is we are using a little more longer focal length uh, telescopes because with four with seven hundred mm with, with five hundred mm on a crop sensor it will give like seven hundred mm. Um, yeah, and if you have a one point four seven hundred eight hundred, maybe at least like thousand thousand two hundred uh, millimeter, we can increase the focal length of a five hundred mm lens. I hope that most of you have 500 mm lens and uh, with 300 mm we can photograph the moon with 500 mm uh, yeah, we can go we can photograph Jupiter and Saturn so uh, if you have a 500 mm lens a crop sensor body and uh, uh, 1.4x or 1.2x teleconverter it is very easy to photograph the um, Jupiter and the Saturn Saturn yeah we can get it but unfortunately but it's not so big, we cannot see it so big, but we can uh, photograph uh, Jupiter and Saturn. The, the technique is similar. You take a short video, upload it in uh, auto stacker. It is going to do uh, all the stacking. You stack everything there and then uh, bring it to Registax and adjust the sharpness. And then finally you bring it to Photoshop and correct, uh, do the color corrections there. Okay. So by this, I think, so these are the images of Jupiter, Mars, Saturn. Okay. So by this time, actually we have completed the lunar plan, the planetary. So now we will be entering into the deep sky, deep sky imaging. So does anybody have any, uh, Questions in this? Anyone? I think I did. Uh, we can proceed. We keep the oh. session at the end. Okay, fine. Maybe so Ajit now, will also feeling boring, you know, continuously yeah, talking. Yeah, continuously so, talking. You know, I, I, I feel this is the right time to ask some questions. See, planetary imaging, most, most of you can do with, by using a uh, the you know wildlife lens if you have around 600 mm fire you know and uh, as Ajit said it's a wonderful idea to use uh, you know take a video and uh, cut them using this uh, you know uh, these softwares and do this so if any questions please come ahead uh, you can do it at your home it's uh, uh, it's not a big procedure you know not like a deep sky imaging so yes if any any questions please you may raise Anybody have any uh, questions? Feel feel free to talk to me. Yeah, it's not uh, like Ajit. no, I am a part of you only. <laughs> uh, yeah, hi Ajit. Uh, thanks for your yeah. mean a lot of information and very precious and information you are providing it. I had just had a small question actually regarding. Uh, uh, I have a crop sensor camera, Canon 70D, but. Along with that, uh, if I give, get the lens, as you mentioned, 500 mm, 600 mm, but to, uh, to get more uh, more interested in the pan planetary, photo planetary photography, so uh, is it sufficient to use that 600 mm or we need to uh, enhance it to somewhere in uh, the good, to invest in good telescopic uh, lens or uh, need to buy any special equipment for that? Ah, see, for planetary, you don't require so much of uh, equipment, you know, no need to track the sky so much because, you know, when you go for 10 second exposure, uh, like, you know, to, you know, if you have a, a crop sensor camera, it is Canon 70, right? 70D. Yeah. 70D. 70D is one point. So Canon is 1.6, no? The crop sensor. 1.6. Yes. yes. Yeah, 1.6 into 500 is uh, like how much it comes? 800, almost 800, right? Yeah, almost. Uh, approximately. Almost 800. Do you have any uh, teleconverter? No, no, not, not. I'm actually just a beginner on that. Just I need to get all this part. Just as an interest, I'm getting it. Yeah, okay. So if you have a teleconverter, or you can you can try borrowing it. You know, it's a big group, you know. So you okay. can get okay. one. You can try it out. I have a you know, 1.4 or 1.5. 
you know, two to 1.6 or two, whatever it is available. You can try it out. See, just focus. We're like focusing is the only uh, issue here. You know, yeah. just uh, um, again, focusing also, you can do it like with our, uh, you know, uh, maybe you can yeah. focus an object which is a little bit very far, maybe like at least 700, 800 meters far from your location, maybe a very little bit spot of light. Or you can focus on a bright star in the sky. Yes, yes. Uh, normally, Not the, uh, the same thing. Yeah, mm. we. Uh, I actually normally uh, when when we go into the field as well, and we quite uh, many times when with our team with Arvind and Rajesh, so I accompanied with them to shot uh, to the shooting for Metroid for Gemini mm. Metroid. Every year I go, go in the field and try to get some uh, stars over there. And but uh, in terms in before doing that, the focusing is the main key thing. Where how to focus and to get the sharper images on the stars. So as you mentioned, mm -hmm. the, the star trail will be there when we continuously uh, open the camera for 25 seconds or 30 seconds uh, at that time. Because mm -hmm. uh, Metroid will be, we don't know at what time it will fall. And so it, if we need to open the camera for that time. So, so th in that case, the major issue was the focusing. And another part was battery running out. That's also yeah. the, these two See, things were there. I will give you a tip for photo, uh, focusing the star. OK? OK, yeah. Uh, Take a strainer. You have a tea strainer at home, right? Okay. Yeah. Take it with you. Uh, maybe not a tea strainer. Little bit uh, bigger uh, wire wire gas. Maybe a rice strainer or something like that. A little bit bigger one. Okay. Place it in front of your uh, uh, lens, and you will see a dot, uh, the stars with spikes. Okay. 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 When you focus the spikes, when, when you focus this, uh, your lens, you know, uh, the one, one spike, you know, one line in the center will be moving up and down when you focus. Okay, just focus okay. through the live wave. Don't focus okay, through okay. live. Okay, okay. okay. Open okay. your live, zoom it, keep it zoomed, okay. and uh, try focusing the uh, star. Actually, because okay. the strainer is in front, it, mm -hmm. the, the stars will give spikes. Okay. 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 Got it, got so it. when the when this uh, I told as I told like you know one one line in the center will be moving up and down. Okay. You will get an X and a line in the center horizontally. This horizontal line will move up and down when you focus it. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So this line have to be exactly in the center. Okay. Alignment with that. Yes. This will give you the sharper stars. Yeah, sure. I will, I will try it next time. In the or else you yeah. can uh, Google in the video in YouTube. Maybe like you can check in the YouTubes. Uh, try making a homemade Bathinos mask. Okay. Bathinos mask is one of the best, best option to uh, focus the star. I'll uh, give in the chat box like what okay. Uh, okay. the name of that. Okay. Uh, it is uh, Bathinos mask. Where is the chat box? Um. Okay, can you note it down actually? B A H T A N N O V. Bartinos mask. B A B A sorry. B A H. Okay. T I N. Okay. N O V. Bartinov. Okay. 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 okay, this is the one. Actually, you can. This is very easy to make a Bartinos mask. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay you can make a Bartinos mask, and you can. Uh, oh yeah, here I got it. I'll. Uh, Bartinov. You can uh, make one. Actually, just cut a cardboard. I like, can you know, just if you can anything like a okay. bit of okay. hard one, uh, mm -hmm. hard board. You can just cut it and make it a bath and a mask and keep it in front of your uh, lens. That is the best option to focus the stars to Ajit, get. 
Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, there are Baskino mask, uh, mask generators available online. So if we give the specification of your lens, then uh, it will produce a button of design in PDF. So mm -hmm. what we can do is we can uh, do 3D printing here. So they can uh, 3D print this on a piece of plastic. So they cost, you know, it will cost you just three reals. And mm -hmm. it's an amazing thing to do. Okay. okay. Yeah, something like that you can do. You can do it. No, it is not necessarily even like that, uh, you know, as is actually just, you know, it's like, uh, you can cut it and do it. It is optional. Like you know, any any somehow you have to do something like that. Mm -hmm. It can be. It will be more. It will look more professional if you print it. If you cut it uh, through your, through a cardboard, it will be a little more. It will not look so professional. It will be like homemade. Or you can use even a, a, a rice strainer in front of your le uh, lens. However, you know, the the purpose is you you have to focus the star. Okay. 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 Simple as that. Very quite simple. Okay, you can uh, do it like that. And when the line comes straight and it is even, you will get the sharpest star. Oh, good, good enough. Thank you. Thank you very much for the tip. Okay. And, uh, one, and yeah, one more thing. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Tell me, please. Yeah, uh, how, uh, in terms of the standard photography, as well, uh, normally when uh, in order to track or wherever where the positions are there, uh, either they are above horizon or below horizon, I normally prefer this Solarium. Uh, I use that software very often to, to look at this uh, position of the planets currently. So, mm -hmm. but uh, in terms of uh, getting this, uh, uh, the uh, example, we, we need to shoot for the comet. Let's say because mm. recently we, there was a neo comet or uh, in 20, neo 2021, yeah, neo uh, uh, neo voice comet was there. So in, in that case, how what should we uh, uh, should we get a new uh, some certain special equipment or we can go ahead with the as you mentioned earlier same equipment. See again, you see neo voice is just a comet which is falling. Okay, that is mm -hmm. like a moving object, maybe say similar to a airplane. Okay. Okay, Consider okay. uh, Neowise as a comet as an aeroplane, and all other stars are same like that. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, because Neo, the comets are falling very fast. You will you will get a trail in that. Okay, that is the one which you have to get it there. Yes. Okay. So this can be done even with the uh, actually Neowise. I shot with fourteen mm lens. I think fourteen or 50, 50 mm. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it can be. Yes, it is very similar, like uh, if you are using a 50mm lens, you can go uh, on a full frame body, you can uh, shoot maximum of 10 seconds, so okay. that okay. Uh, you will not get trails. So that is this is the golden rule actually, 50mm uh, mm -hmm. and 10 seconds, that is like fi 500 divided by your focal length. Yeah, okay. 500 divided by your focal length will give you the exposure length. How much time we can open them? Yes. Okay. 500 divided by fo uh, focal length will give focal you length, yes. uh, the exposure, exposure length time. so that you will not get any star trails. Okay. Okay. But even like that, I used to prefer, uh, prefer if it is 10 seconds, if, if the focal formula gives you 10 seconds, I always shoot 8 seconds to be on mm -hmm. safer side. Safer side, okay. Yeah, to be on safer side, I'll go a little bit low. low. Okay. Fine, fine. Uh, any other questions? Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. So now we can go enter deep space imaging, right? Okay. Where is it? Deep sky objects. This is called actually uh, uh, DSO, deep sky objects. When you are doing deep sky imaging, uh, the more the time you expose your images or the, the longer, uh, the more the duration which you are spending, the more the data you collect. The more the data you collect, the more the 
quality of your image increases and it will be beautiful okay so even you can uh, photograph a target with in one hour 10 hour 50 hour 100 hours even 1000 hours it's up to you but when you whenever your exposure uh, duration increases then your quality of the image will be increased because of the more fine data you are collecting this is the um, proportion, uh, proportionality so if 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 you are photographing one hour the quality will be less if you are photographing 10 hour it will be the quality will become better 50 hours it will become more better 100 hours it will become more way better way more than uh, 50 hours it's like that okay but it is possible to photograph in one hour also okay based on the target what you are shooting now there are two types of imaging in uh, deep, uh, deep sky imaging it is monochrome, uh, monochrome imaging and color imaging this depends on the sensor which you are using okay for a stock DSLR, it is a stock DSLR or a DSLR camera. It is called, uh, it is actually uh, color imaging. Or you will have, have the one shot color cameras, OSCs. The same, like, you know, 1600 or uh, yeah, 1600 mm. Yeah, it is, I think it is not there. Okay. But Yes, ZWO has same different uh, cameras, which produce have which has both monochrome sensor and color sensors. Even the dedicated astro astrophotography cameras. These are monochrome imaging will give you a monochrome uh, result. Color will give uh, the color image. Okay, here. Color imaging requires not much skills, you know, even though you have, uh, it, it don't require so much skills. If you have a pristine sky, like Oman, bottle one, I don't prefer to photograph monochrome. I don't want to photograph monochrome because monochrome is really hard. When you come to city, it is like, you know, in bottle nine sky. Uh, yeah, let me explain the bottle scale. Bottle scale is a scale which has been come up, uh, which I think which came up in 2002 or 2004. This is actually uh, created by an amateur photographer uh, like us. He studied the quality of sky across the world and he uh, he created this scale. Bottles, bottle 0, 01 uh, one will be the darkest sky and bottle 9 will be the brightest sky. Okay. Like, uh, yeah, say for example, like if in, in Ladakh, Ladakh is bottle one sky and Doha is bottle nine sky. So this is the difference. And maybe in our villages, like, you know, if you go back to our villages in India, uh, it will be like bottle four, bottle three, bottle five. It's, it will be like that. So in the middle of the city, it is bottle nine here. So when it is bottle nine, you have very less options shooting color, but more into monochrome. Just because monochrome has added filters, and of course, color also has added filters, but the wavelength, you know, which uh, the filters allow will be very, very uh, fine in monochrome. And uh, other than the color uh, filters, the filters in the color camera, even though they are called as narrow band imaging. Okay. And in these two, there is another type it comes, okay, which is called as broadband imaging and narrow band imaging. Okay. What is shoot through uh, a normal uh, OSC, one shot color without any filters is called broadband imaging. Okay. You will get the exact colors, whatever it is available from the sky, you will get it. That is broadband imaging. When you add a filter along with that, say for example, uh, um, I have a, a Optolong uh, filter, actually this is called as L-Extreme. That is a um, narrowband filter. It is like, it is a 
tri-bond, tri-band or uh, yeah, dual band filter. Okay, so this will stop some of the light from um, the ambient, uh, some of the ambient light. It will let pass only some particular frequency wavelength of light to come to the sensor. So this is called a narrow band. And in monochrome cameras, you can add broadband filters or narrow band filters. Say, for example, if you have, uh, there is like uh, filters called luminance, red, green, blue, hydrogen alpha, oxygen three, sulfur two, hydrogen beta. So like this, uh, so many filters are available. Okay. Uh, similar to our, uh, uh, what, like ND filters, you know, with different uh, um, f-stops. These are the filters which we use in uh, astrophotography. So if you, uh, if, you are, if you are using luminance filter, it will allow only the white light which comes from the sky. Okay. If you are uh, using red filter, it will let pass only the red color. If you are using blue, it will let pass only blue. Okay, so it filters like that. Then, so galaxies are broadband targets. Okay, and nebulae are coming to the narrow band targets. So in narrow band, you have uh, hydrogen alpha, sulfur two, oxygen three, and hydrogen beta is also there, but people are not using hydrogen beta much. So usually we are using hydrogen alpha, uh, sulfur, and oxygen three. So these three filters are the ones which we are using in uh, monochrome imaging for deep space. So what hydrogen alpha does is hydrogen alpha filter will uh, allow uh, only the hydrogen uh, alpha light to enter the camera, uh, enter the sensor. And uh, similar, like you know, sulfur will allow only the sulfur uh, data, and uh, um, oxygen will allow only the oxygen uh, data. So here we are collecting all the uh, photons from the sky. Okay, so each photon will be accumulated here, and uh, this particular uh, no three and um, and this narrow band again has different uh, strength, like our ND filters, three nm, five nm, seven nm. 11 nm like that so 11 nm will be little more you know it will expose a little more 3 nm will be very ultra narrow you know it will it will let pass only this particular so it's like that so it it, it ranges upon your budget and uh, your requirement in uh, i am having three i am using 3 nm filters because i am shooting from bottle 9 uh, I have uh, seven nm filters also. I tried the uh, seven nm filters. They are good actually. Then uh, when I uh, wanted it more, then I bought the three nm filters. And three nm filters are excellent actually for the uh, um, bottle nine sky. And if you go to, if you are using, uh, if you are going if photo photographing from uh, bottle one or bottle four, bottle five. Uh, five nm filters are uh, more than um, five nm, seven nm filters are more than enough if you want to do narrow band. But if it is darker, like uh, say for example, if it's like darker like a bottle one, I don't uh, want to shoot uh, narrow band okay, because it's more complicated actually. So for this, for this, actually we have uh, to set up our equipment first okay, to photograph all these things. So now. We have covered the different types of imaging. Now we will do, we will see like how we are going to photograph. Okay. The first way, actually, we have to set up our equipment uh, anyhow. For that, we need the mount. Say, for example, we are having a sky guider, a sky tracker, or a guider, or a uh, equatorial mount, whatever it is. You have to align it to the polar uh, Polaris because. It is similar like you know our GPS. So we should tell the mount that you are in this part of the uh, earth and you are looking into this particular star. Okay. Why we are aligning it with Polaris is because Polaris is the one which has a very small uh, rotating orbit. Okay. The rest others all have a huge orbit. So whenever 
your uh, bound tracks it has to track in a very fine uh, you know pixel or uh, arc seconds you can say like arc seconds very fine arc seconds very small maybe like less than one arc second they have to your mount have to track so for that you you always keep the uh, mount aligned to the polaris so first step will be the polar alignment so in polar alignment you tell your mount you keep your mount facing northwards whatever it is it is a sky tracker or a sky guider or a uh, equatorial mount keep uh, you know your uh, mount should face the north direction towards the polaris and from there uh, you can then you have a few other steps for uh, aligning to the polar uh, polaris you have different uh, polar alignment cameras are there which will give you uh, which will save your life a lot uh, make you make your life more easier to do the full polar alignment or you can manually do the polar alignment using the sky charts or your uh, you know like uh, other applications in the phone uh, or a plane sphere which is which comes handy whatever it is so you have to first tell your mount that you are facing the north north and this is the polar polaris okay next comes is the uh, next step, what I uh, follow will be like uh, just just do the mount to the particular uh, target. Okay, here what I do is like uh, in the early stages I used to manually uh, move my mount, you know, move, uh, slew the telescope to the particular uh, uh, target. But now I am doing it computerized automated actually i have a software called the sequence generator pro i'm using that which will be which is again connected to another my planetary uh, my uh, planetarium software usually like sky safari and the stellarium i am using another uh, software called uh, cartedusiel okay uh, this cartedusiel is a planetary planetarium software which i am using actually it's quite fine all this uh, it's all similar like uh, stellarium or uh, you know, sky safari all are okay but i think sky safari is not available for the um, laptop it is available for uh, phones only i think so i'm not sure for uh, windows and mac i think uh, we have uh, stellarium and uh, this one and more other uh, softwares or uh, planetarium softwares are also there but very popular among astrophotographers are this uh, Stellarium and uh, Cartesian. I am using Cartesian. So when you uh, command your, uh, there is another, uh, yeah, second thing is like framing. No? You have to identify your target, what target is coming up. Okay. See, I, I'm giving so many softwares and uh, uh, in this, okay. Just uh, if possible, you can just keep in note what are the uh, software system I am using, so which will make your life easier. Okay. Now, after for doing the polar alignment, what I'll do is, I will go to uh, a software, uh, an application called the Telescopius. This will show me what all the softwares are, uh, what are the targets are rising, what time it is rising. So it will allow me to plan. Of course, this Cartier UCL also has, Telerium has all this planning, so planning, uh, um modules but i felt that this telescope is a little more handy for me because i'm not so much into astronomy because i'm mostly doing astrophotography so uh, this will this makes my life easier i go to uh, telescopes i will tell my for this is my location and uh, what are the targets now coming up and then what which catalog i need so the star catalogs are like Messier star catalogs are there, IC is there, NGC is there, that's new general catalog, uh, Abel's is there, SH Sharples is there. So there is so many star catalogs are there. So in which catalog I need, and uh, I can choose in telescope. Yes, I can, I'll tell my uh, location, I'll uh, tell, okay, in this uh, catalog I need to photograph. Then it will tell it will give you a list of uh, targets what are coming up what is the rising time 
what is the transit time and what what is uh, transit is the time when it comes to the peak then again it goes right down uh, set so this will give you the transit uh, racing time transit time and set time and in which direction it goes like you know north northwest south south is whatever it is like you know and somehow it go to the west it is everything starts rises in the uh, east and the sets in the west so it's like that when when the target is so it will give the direction so now what i'll do is i'll go to again my uh, sg pro that is the sql generator pro i will uh, have a i am uh, it has a framing wizard okay in this wizard i'll tell my okay this particular uh, target is the one and in this target uh, i have to photograph this target so there is a set of images which has been already fed to the uh, software so this software uh, will tell okay the sky will be like this uh, this target will be so i can frame it how i need it now so i will frame the location uh, the target how in which angle i need everything then i uh, set it go so the mount is automatically slowing to the target and it is it has gone there okay now here comes the next one uh, plate solving okay the framing actually i have to put it in the top actually i think in the uh, yeah i think here in this uh, i have given third huh? so the second will be the framing the third is plate solving now i will plate solve it plate solve is plate solving is again uh, a old technique when they have in uh, early stages of astrophotography what they used to do is uh, they are photographing the night sky for for example the astrophotographers they photograph the night sky it is called one plate okay then another like you know the sky keeps on changing right so now you have to photograph another one uh, plate now they are verifying whether this part of the first image and the second image are same and they are studying it okay if it is not then okay just move the camera left and right or you know at particular angle you change the angle uh, and verify whether your frame is perfect or not so this is called a plate solving so this is again a module in the in my software initially i uh, it is not necessary to do uh, plate solving we cannot do it that okay we cannot do it manually so it is done all by uh, the software so you do the plate solving now the the software does the plate solving so once the plate is solved what it will say is like if you have an error it will say that okay no um ajit your uh, frame is like this okay you have selected a frame with uh, a, this particular uh, uh, framing but uh, your plate is not like that so you rotate your camera to some particular degree okay then it okay so now i have to there is again for this also you have automated stuffs camera rotator is there but i don't have one i actually manually do this uh, camera rotation i rotate the camera to that particular angle then again i solve so if everything is goes everything goes fine the software will says yeah your plate is solved you are good to go good to photo start of photography now what i do is now uh, my plate solving is done my framing is done my polar lemon is done framing is done and plate solving is done now i have to focus the telescope okay focusing has uh, again you can do focusing manually or you can do auto focusing but one thing we have to keep in mind is focus always changes because the target always changes target when it starts from low angle actually i, I always photograph when the target is above 25 degree angle and uh, until my 25 degree actually when i if i come to my 25 degree my north is my west is all polluted here so i don't uh, go up to 25 degree maybe 30 degree i'll stop so when the 25 when that my uh, image or uh, target comes above uh, 25 degree from the horizon i'll start imaging so before when yeah for we came to for uh, focusing 
when the when the angle of the because everything every object goes from one angle comes up to the transit position and sets so every time the angle changes and when you when the light comes inside your optical tube the optical optics get heated up when it gets heated up it will lose focus okay so what you have to do is every uh, i my my way is like you know every one hour i will refocus every one hour or every five frames i i will refocus the telescope so that's again another uh, module so if you are using a autofocuser i will tell the autofocuser that i have to focus every one hour and i have to uh, and you have to do it so now the focusing is focuser module is the, doing the focusing and uh, focusing is done so here actually usually for uh, focus focusing you have to achieve a v, v curve and the v curve the lowest point will be the focused uh, position and if you have a focuser auto focuser it always goes to the it always sets it automatically same like our afs okay the focus will be set now we have to go for the imaging now we can choose like uh, myself because i am using narrow band i will choose how many number of uh, hydrogen alpha frames i need to do maybe like uh, this last one i said told like you know uh, it was 15 minutes of eight, one exposure length and i was doing 18 78 or 88 yeah 78 frames 78 frames of each uh, uh, filter so not 78 80 yeah 20, yeah 80 80 frames of hydrogen alpha 15 frames of 15 yeah 20 20 hours of hydrogen alpha 15 hours of oxygen and 15 hours of sulfur so this was my target so i said to my uh, software that i need uh, this particular filter this particular this much number of hours this so i i give the uh, the imaging module that this is have to be provided okay and now i have started it now my i'm uh, starting my imaging session so how come we can uh, choose the, for uh, 15 minutes so usually all the tracking mounts will track but tracking will not be that precise so what we are going to do is we have to uh, do the guiding here okay now you have to guide your mount that your star is moving so you have to come back to the position for that we are using another software called phd2 phd2 is again a open source software this is also free you can uh, uh, download it and it is very straightforward this also but for this you have to have a separate set of uh, telescope and a camera so this is called the guiding setup so this particular guide guide scope and the guide camera will be connected to the phd2 software to the guiding guiding software so the guiding software will get every second or every 1.5 second or every two seconds the image from the camera it will uh, check whether the stars are found this again all through plate solving okay it will check the previous plate and this current plate all this will happen when very fraction of seconds it will plate solve uh, if it if the star has moved it will the, the software will send a pulse to that uh, mount and the mount will come back to the uh, original position so it's like that every one second uh, the transfer will be uh, done from the guide camera to the software and within very microseconds or milliseconds it will uh, the pulses will be sent and uh, the tracking will be done so this is how the guide software will allow your mount to keep your mount uh, guiding keep your uh, uh, telescope guiding the uh, stars so that you can go to up to any uh, length of your exposures maybe you can go for 30 minutes one hour depending on your camera's capability 
you, you can like you can go for 30 minutes uh, 30 minutes of single exposure so that your life will be more easier when you are stacking you don't want to stack uh, 200 frames or 500 frames uh, instead of uh, like say for example if you have um, if you want two hours of data if you are using uh, two minute exposures then how many frames like you have to stack 60 frames but if you are using 15 minutes you need you need to stack eight frames okay so this is the condition when you when your uh, number of uh, exposures are less then it is the the stacking procedure will be easy but again this this also we don't have to stack automatic we have don't have to stack manually again the softwares will do it that also is uh, done and now the light frames are taken okay say for example i have done everything and it is photographing all the photographs are done now see the light source always a frame which comes uh, inside uh, in your uh, sensor will not be having even light corner to corner you will not have even corner to center you will not have even even light your sensor because you know it is in, unlike our uh, dslrs the sensor uh, sensor is not kept inside a body okay it is not kept protected so your sensor always gets dusty it will have dust spots so these are all the imperfections in your uh, image so now you have to fix all these things okay you are exposing for 15 minutes you will you will get thermal noise your uh, sensor is already having a red noise then uh, you have you know you don't have an even light because maybe sometimes uh, ambient light will be more sometimes uh, you know there will be dust spots in your sensor so all these things have to be fixed for that we will be using calibration kits okay um here i have uh, spoken about four types of calibration frames this is what i use and these are the standard uh, calibration frames so here bias darks flats and flat darks okay flat darks is not a beginner uh, level calibration frames it's not necessary in the early stages maybe when you require more uh, you know when you try to push you up more you can uh, take flat darks bias bias frames will be reducing will reduce the read noise of the sensor what by what how you will take a bias frame keep your uh, lens covered or telescope covered and the fastest shutter which you can which your uh, camera can click at what uh, iso ISO or GAIN actually. Here actually in astrophotography, we will use the, uh, the terminology GAIN. Okay. At what GAIN? The, the same GAIN which you are uh, photographing your lights. The lights, only the exposure length changes to the fastest. So in case in my case, actually it is, it is 0 0.01 seconds. In that speed, you are photographing one image. So same like that, you take like 50 frames or 60 frames again that one is like you know uh, technically speaking it is like two four six eight uh 16 32 it should go like that only then uh you know the the calibration will be okay otherwise you know some like if, if i have 35 frames of calibration 35 calibration frames actually 32 is enough this 32 will be left over so you this 32 this three frames the time you are spending for that is uh not used so it has to be done like that, 32, 64, 128, like that. So if you are going for 62, 64 frames of uh, dark, you stack them. That is your master dark. I'm sorry, master bias. Okay. And next, now the darks. Darks same like how you are uh, doing the lights, but only thing you keep the uh, telescope or the lens capped so that you get a dark file. The exposure length will be same as the light frames. Your uh, all of the settings, your gain, exposure length, everything will be same like your light frame. The only thing you put a cap on the lens of the telescope. So this one, uh, again, this darks will be used to reduce the thermal noise. 
say if you are taking uh, if your exposure length is 15 minutes this will produce thermal noise because every photon when it comes to your uh, sensor every pixel is converting it into electron this discharge charges this will produce heat in the sensor and there will be heat noise that is called a thermal noise so this thermal noise will be eliminated by using darts not one dart again you have to stack few darts maybe like 8 16 20, 32 64 like that okay my usually i take 32 frames that is very easy for me like more than that it is not necessary for me so it's like 32 darts i stack them i use as a master dart now flats what do you, what you will do flats flats when you say it will be like a little bit uh it will seem easy but it is a little bit complicated actually flats if you are not taking the correct flats you are going to spoil your image okay flats is like you know uh you put a light source in front of your telescope uh, i think maybe i don't have some. let me check if i have a photo of how to how we are taking flats it's not here okay i'll show you when you uh, you put a light source above the telescope and uh, get a u curve in the uh, u exposure curve that will give you a good flat but again it is experimental based on your uh, sensor it differs from sensor to sensor filter to filter it differs so this will reduce the imperfections in the frame what are the imperfections the light you know like it, even the light will not be distributed evenly from center to the corner so this one will be fixed if there is any dust spots in the uh, sensor this will be fit to, fixed with the uh, calibration uh, with the flat frames flat darts actually it will, this is a little more you know in the next uh, level what we do is like you know uh, when we are making master flats we will photograph the darts at the same length of the flats exposure length and you have to sub you have to calibrate the flats and the flat darts uh, with each other and we will find a master flat so it's a little more complicated so that will, that is not necessary now so darts bias and flats all this three frame three calibration frames will be having will be coming out with a master flat master dark and master bias these three masters will be calibrated with the light frames which you are taking and finally you will end up with a result okay, one stack if it is a one one shot camera or the color camera you will get a fine result of that or if you are having a narrow band uh, uh, mono imaging and narrowband filters there are two types of palettes which we use one is the hubble palette which is sho or the ho palette this is bicolor palette that's the they trade true color palette ho okay. in hoo actually there is only two filters we will be using hydrogen alpha and oxygen so you photograph uh, some images with hydrogen alpha filter and uh, some with uh, oxygen 3 filter and when it comes to stacking in Photoshop, say for example, uh, actually I am using a different software and Photoshop also I am using. Uh, in Photoshop, we have channels, right? RGB. So for uh, red, I, we, we will substitute hydrogen. The result from the hydrogen will be in the red channel. And the green and blue channel, uh, the oxygen, the result from the oxygen filter will be there. And in SHO palette or the Hubble palette, uh, sulfur will be in the red uh, uh, red channel hydrogen alpha will be in the green channel and oxygen 3 will be in the blue channel so this is how you stack uh, your images and produce the uh, result of your um, image you know either it's a broadband target or a narrow band target or a one shot color target you know. finally you will end up with a nice image according to your perspective okay if you like uh, your image red blue 
popped up or green popped up it's up to your taste this is the artistic uh, eye of the photographer here you will show you all your um, ideas how you have to to show your uh, show this particular marvel in the sky to the world it is all the photographers eye. that's how you stack and find the results so this is actually my observatory setup it's so the telescope in my observatory so this is one hydrogen alpha target actually this is this is called the cone nebulae but actually this is my earlier image actually this one is having maybe like i think 6 hours of hydrogen alpha data and this is from this is using a single hydrogen alpha filter so this is called the monochrome image so this will, you will get three types three uh, images same like this similar not similar like this uh, you will get a different frame of if you when you are using an oxygen tree filter maybe that's a different one and uh, sulfur also different so but mono will be like this i can show you a little one one or two images okay so this is this one is my first uh, orion nebula shot this for this has been photographed with on a uh, the avx mount yeah it's a celestron avx a beginner mount and that's a very fantastic mount actually i used it for some time and it's good actually and the equipment is just a 500 mm lens and the stock dslr d4 camera and it was like it is like around i think uh, one and a half hour of exposure okay so we can photograph like this also with uh, with the stock uh, DSLR and finder mm, but only thing you need a, uh, a tracker. Of course, the finder mm will not be uh, will not be hold in this uh, mount because this um, 500 mm. What are, maybe the, the new 500 mm are good actually. 600 mm Sigma lenses are uh, lighter, and the no new fluoride lenses are also lighter. So that can hold it. This this mount also can hold it, but you cannot go for 15 minutes of exposure. It's not. It, it will not handle it. Maybe like two minutes exposure will be okay with this. Okay, or else if you have a proper equatorial mount, then you can push it. So this would this this is the result of the, uh, the from the stock DSLR. Now um, this is. Uh, also an old image. This is a pelican nebula. You know, pelican nebula or swan nebula, they call it. Not swan. This is pelican nebula. Yeah. Pelican nebula, actually, this is a, a SHO palette, actually. Uh, Hubble's palette. So here, this we have, I have engraved like four, uh, fil three filters, hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. But this is almost like, I think this is also very less uh, hours. This was maybe like 12 hours or 14 hours of uh, exposure so every this is andro this is andromeda galaxy actually this is a broadband target you know i have involved uh, five filters in this um, luminance red green blue and hydrogen alpha actually this is a mix of broadband and narrowband uh, uh, filters imaging actually so this is a this was a, a trial and error which i did because Andromeda gives a lot of high infrared rays, you know, that this red red lights here and there, all these are the result of the hydrogen alpha. So this can be done like this. So this is but this is also very not long exposure. It's like maybe only uh, four and four and a half hours of uh, exposure with this. Um, So this is just four and a half hours of exposure. Paul is asking me. And uh, then, yeah, this is Pinwheel Galaxy, Triangulum Galaxies. You know, these are all taken when I was, uh, like, you know, when I was a beginner. Like, you know, it was like 2018, 19 uh, times. Um, and these are with the stock uh, camera. This is not like you know, didn't much involve much filters in this because by then I was big early uh, starting to learn. And this is also Hossett Nebula, which I have taken a long time back. This is hydrogen HOO palette. Here I have started with uh, the um, you know, uh, 
narrow band imaging. Uh, this one is also fine. I like this image, even though I, the, the new images are more good. This are my this this one this this image I like very much. This is because this this was my early images. You know? And so this is a Thor helmet. This is again HO. This is only two panel, two bicolor image. This is Eastern Whale. Actually, a whale nebula is also a very uh, good for a uh, wide field target because there is two whales actually, Eastern Whale and Western Whale. Uh, both masks will be looking very nicely. This one, actually, if you are rotating this, um, this is like landscape, right? If you are putting it horizontal, it will look like a whale, you know, a mask of a person. It will be very nice, actually. So there is two whales, actually, Eastern and Western, the clouds. It will form a circle, and it's, it's a very beautiful target if, it's, if you are doing white field. Uh, yeah, this is the Western whale, actually. So these two will be like a circle. And very nice. So these are all like very short exposures, maybe like eight to ten hours of exposure, like total overall movie. Now, yeah, monkey head. This is also hydrogen uh, bicolor palette because uh, SHO palette I came up lately, very lately I have started the imaging three filters. The earlier I was studying only uh, bicolor. I think this one is uh, SHO, uh, Hubble's palette actually, uh, Pac-Man Nebula. This is Rosette Nebula. Uh, I can see that the, the, the dots over here, the, the black dots, like noise like kind of stuff. This is, uh, the lack of data, you know, this is very less, maybe like two hours of exposure overall, but you can produce some li uh, results like this. And uh, but if you could have, if I could have taken maybe another uh, five or ten hours on this Rosette Nebula, the result could have been much, much more pleasant. But this one is also a very nice image which I have shot in the early, early stages. It was good actually. It's good actually. Really, I love this images. Uh, yeah, this is the. This is the Swan Nebula. Okay. This is also a bicolor, like two uh, filters, only hydrogen, alpha, and oxygen. California Nebula, bicolor. See, all these things, which is like mostly in the red, will be like a bicolor imaging. Okay. Because as I told you, you know, like when it's bicolor, it's called as true color. We don't know whether it is red or uh, something, but we we assume it like this. All the sky is of infrared light, so you get almost all this red. This is, uh, yeah, this is like, what is this? What is this? Jellyfish Nebula. I have a, uh, this is the old image of jelly, Jellyfish Nebula. I have a SHO color image, you know, three, uh, three filter image now, couple palette image. I'll, it'll come, it'll come up later. This one. Flaming star. What is this? Ah, this is a crab. This is the this is a crab nebula. By this time, I started learning, like you know, uh, mostly into. I started liking mostly SHO Hubble uh, tricolor palettes. This is this started falling in love in SHO imaging. This is flaming star nebula. This is again bicolor. Dolphin nebula. This is three color images actually. Uh, this is three three uh, filters are involved. SHO. This is again bubble uh, nebula. The 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 bubble in this image will look very nice actually when you are photographing it. Heart nebula. This is uh, SHO. Monkey head. Monkey head, uh, I think you might have seen that 
it's all version of the, the, uh, the red color. Now this is like three color image. Uh, skeleton and crossbones. Skull and crossbones, actually. You will see a skull here and the crossbones, like danger symbol. Heart nebula, the soul nebula. This is the recent one, actually. This is um, jellyfish. Yeah, see, I forgot the names. This is a recent uh, this uh, house nebula. This tadpole nebula. See, now recently I have sh started shooting almost like. I have a target of at least keeping uh, 40 hours in each uh, image uh, so that you get more data and more uh, easy for processing, you know, and uh, because you have plenty of data and you have plenty of colors and will be looking very nice, easy for uh, imaging. And uh, these are the photographs which I have shot. I think by this time we'll end up. <laughs> Anybody have questions? Now it's question time. No. Asis bhai, any questions? Uh, can I, Mr. Ajit? Uh, my name is Ajit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a wonderful session and a lot of information. In fact, myself and Abdullah started the Deep Sky uh, around two years before together. Ah. And of course, uh -huh. Abdullah started going far ahead. So I've been a little bit uh, slow because during the last two years, I've been more concentrating on other area of photography. So uh -huh. in fact, the information which you provided is uh, amazing and uh, not a lot of new things for us. Mm. Uh, basically, I don't know whether you'll be able to uh, just give a bit of uh, I mean, uh, input about the processing. Uh, I know it's not an easy thing to complete the processing process okay. to everybody, at least to just uh, for the information for others, how it has been processed. Because generally, basically, taking imaging uh, data collection is one thing, uh, yeah. which you elaborately completed now. But for, uh, for, for the general yeah, for information for others, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just give a brief idea so that now there's yeah, I think I, how is the process. I was having in the, in the session, but actually I think missed out. Okay. Yeah, uh, a brief idea see. so that now there's will know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For processing, actually, see, there are uh, softwares called the uh, Deep Sky. There is a very, very beautiful software and a very, it's a, it's again an open source called the uh, Deep Sky Stacker. Okay. Uh, we call it DSS, Deep Sky Stacker for Windows. Actually, it is not uh, available for Mac OS. It is for Windows. And uh, this one, if you are uh, in this, actually, all these uh, frames we have photographed, right? Lights, darks, uh, flats, bias, and uh, uh, flat darks. If, if you are uh, downloading the uh, uh, photos, like you know, in, the, in this particular software, if you open the software, you, it will ask to add your flats, add your darks, add your lights, and should I add your uh, flat bias, flat, flat darks, then uh, you can just add it and uh, you can ask it to register and calibrate. It's very straightforward, actually, the software is DSS. It's very easy also. You can, uh, but uh, one thing is like, when it comes into narrow band, uh, you, for one shot color, it is very easy. You um, bring it all the images in, in all the particular, you know, different uh, frames like you know lights and darks, uh, da lights and the calibration frames. You can just input in a uh, uh, input on it, and you just just start. It's on a click, one click, you know, stack finish. Then it will start registering all the uh, images. It will align the images. Then it will uh, stack it, and it will give you. It will give you a color image in one shot colors and this color image will be in a uh, actually it can be made to 16 bit image uh, uh, as a tiff file and you can bring it to photoshop 
and uh, of course when when it comes in photoshop it will, you will, you won't be see the you're seeing the image will all be dark you know uh, you have to uh, bring out all the data from inside uh, from the frame um, with your uh, processing skills you know you have to increase the exposure you have to increase the uh, contrast you have to change the colors all these things in this okay next when it comes to um, narrow band when it comes to narrow band you are we are taking all monochrome uh, images right so it's like hydrogen alpha sulfur and uh, oxygen so in this you have to stack all this separately one filter hydrogen alpha you have to stack separately sulfur you have to stack separately and uh, oxygen you have to stack separately so when you stack separately you will have three uh, filters three uh, images you will uh, uh, it will uh, it will be ending up in three images now what we are going to do is in uh, photoshop you can add it to uh, like in channels you know in color channels you can copy this uh, sulfur to red and you paste it and uh, in um, oxygen you can uh, copy that image and paste it in uh, blue channel you, uh, this uh, sul uh, hydrogen alpha that image you can open in photoshop copy it and paste it in the uh, green channel so when you copy and paste everything in three different channels you will end up with a color image but then again you know exposure correction color correction all these things will be uh according to the photographer's uh, skill and talents this one you have to master it this this is uh, actually processing is again a bit of hard subject it is not that very easy to uh, learn it even you know i i have been attending a lot of workshops on this i am studying it uh, i am getting one to one classes and actually i'm uh, i'm still you know you cannot uh, um be a master in one day it, it, it needs time a lot of time uh, and you need a lot of practice you can uh, there are so many uh, data which you can collect get it from the internet actually so many astrophotographers are they are giving out their data uh, to improve our uh, processing skills so you can get data from them and you can process them and uh, you can learn it but the software which I use for photo uh, processing is, I don't use uh, Deep Sky Stacker. I use a software called Pix Insight. This P I X I N S I G H D. So this Pix Insight is uh, one of the fine uh, softwares for astrophotography processing. Uh, this has all modules, and uh, this is again actually, but this is another ocean. You have to uh, learn it. Uh, otherwise, you cannot. Uh, do it but uh, again you know uh, i what i do is i do the basic uh, stacking color correction and some noise reduction in that and then i bring to actually my final i will bring i'm bringing to photoshop uh, to fine tuning only otherwise the rest of everything i'm doing in uh, pix inside but there are easy ways to do in photoshop also Maybe, you know, like, uh, yeah, as uh, we mentioned earlier, like, you know, um, I'm planning for a, a session in uh, Oman offline. I'll, I'm planning for it. If it is like FSO, I have to, uh, we are discussing on it, uh, you know, to give a good discount on for the FSO members who are joining, who have been in this, who are in this uh, session maybe like 25 to 30 percent discount uh, for the session uh, who, have, who, have, who are in this uh, meeting. Uh, so this one actually you are, uh, uh, you know, FSO is uh, handling this. So if it is, uh, maybe we can, uh, if it is offline, we can uh, even give trainings uh, for, uh, for, uh, for uh, processing. And uh, yeah, of course I am, giving one-to-one -one, uh, trainings also. And uh, so there are a few clients for me. 
who uh, for whom I am doing uh, assisting them, who are whom for whom I am uh, teaching them. But of course, I will charge it for that. Charge for that. One uh, one to one access from the scratch to setting up the observatory and uh, giving sessions. So if anybody is interested, you can contact me. I think I have uh, given my uh, contact number in the yeah. I have given my contact number in uh, in the chat box, and uh, my email ID is there, and my contact number also I'll uh, post here. You can feel free to contact me, okay, um, for any uh, doubts, if you need any special sessions, we can uh, arrange it, or otherwise, like, you know, when, you, if, if, uh, when I'm coming there, you can uh, attend if there is any, anything you have to learn more about this, you know, and uh, uh, yeah, this uh, yeah. now actually, um, yeah, hopefully maybe in the month of May, we are planning to do one uh, session in uh, Oman. Uh, any questions? Yes. Yeah, so All are stuck, awestruck or uh, bored? No, no, never bored. We were uh, excited and we were listening to you. Ajayata, I think this narrow band imaging is one of the best, uh, you know, way for you because you can do it. Uh, you can set up a small setup at your terrace so you don't need to go down to Sifa or somewhere and you can shoot. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll work out. Uh, we'll work out. So, yeah, yeah something, uh, see, comparing to no, what... Uh, what I was telling is you were planning to... You do some investment on the you know the normal thing i'm i'm telling you this is if you concentrate on narrow band image then uh, yes, you can really do it because you have a dedicated test for me that is a problem mm. so that's a real thing yeah i mean i, I i'm I, i'm really uh, amazed to see the images of which uh, sajit has uh, projected now and he says uh, the sky is bottle nine so probably we will Uh, though it is a city, uh, I, we should be able to get better. I mean, uh, uh, with with less hours of data collection, we'll be able to get reasonably good image. That's what I think. Uh, sorry, guys. Actually, it was my my dog. Yeah. Any, I any suggest other, Can you hear me? Yeah, now? I, su uh, I suggest other members who Hello? may be new to the DS, uh, DSO. So please come out with your. Uh, Hello. Chorus, yeah. You can hear. Uh, can you hear me? We can. We can. Uh, okay. But I think I cannot hear it. Hear you. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Now. So, any doubts on this session? I think I cannot hear anything. I think I don't think anybody will have doubts. Uh, doubt. It's maybe they have new queries. Uh, you know, doubt is, you know, uh, most of uh, we people in Muscat, we didn't try it much. Or uh, now, maybe with this, uh, a lot of people will be coming up with uh, astro-imaging. So, in this case, can you can you recommend uh, to those who are planning to start, what will be a minimum requirement by starting, you know, with their existing, uh, you know, setup? What do they have to add, you know? Um, a minimal setup to start with. Plus, what are the you know the best targets uh, in the in the initial stage? Am I right, Ajeta? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and along with that, you can suggest that in, uh, some kind of uh, companies or models or brands what you normally you can prefer. Ah, uh, uh, see, actually, um, 
the setup is like you know or the investment is according to your uh, passion actually i started with uh, uh, this one i started with this then uh, i bought a celestron avx mount then it was not enough for me then i bought my skywatch mount okay so it depends on your passion if you are uh, really interested and if you want to pursue this for long term then i would prefer to go i would suggest you to go for a good mount first okay uh, maybe something which can hold uh, 20 kilograms okay 20 at least to 20 to, uh, at least uh, yeah 15 to 20 kilograms of payload if it can handle uh, you can run it for at least like uh, maybe 10 15 years okay uh, rather if you are not going to upgrade your uh, uh, you know telescopes with uh, newtonians because newtonians are uh, really heavy uh, maybe one telescope will be like it's approximately a medium uh, size maybe an 8 inch telescope will be coming around like uh, 15 to 20 kilograms so this payload will not be enough but if you are uh, focusing to go on refractors only but refractors are again you know quite expensive little uh, not little same like similar to lenses it is a little expensive but they are light and uh, uh, this 20 kilogram is more than enough okay newtonians are a little cheaper compared to this so either you have to spend on your mount or either you have to spend on your telescopes but to begin with if you if you can if you have enough time and if you can uh, spend uh, if you really have passion no but to be, you the the passion only then only if you are entering into this we can understand so better i prefer to go for this you know i'll ask you to buy something like this a sky Gator pro this one is i opt on actually this is available in oman okay yeah this is available in oman uh, or maybe you can go for a small mount like the cm 26 p is there now that is uh, that one will have 11 kg of payload uh, 11 to 12 kg of payload that one is also good so that one is yeah that's a, that's a good mount because i have a cm 25 p that's an old one now it is not uh, made maybe two years last year they stopped it you know, last year yeah this year they stopped it 2022 they stopped it now cm 26 is there uh, 26 is good actually so we can go for a cm 26 that one again it is easily available actually in oman you can get all the things there uh, but here in qatar we buy everything online we don't have any shops here okay. uh, so we are doing it um, be like you can spend how much this one is less as i told you this one is less than around 500 dollars this one uh, the cm 25p will be around uh, 26p will be around like uh, 800 or 900 dollars maybe around something that uh, range price range but with uh, if you have a proper mount initially then uh, you can photograph with your stock cameras but of course as i said you know from the city it is not possible you have to do in the from the dark side and uh, this 26p is a very light mount and it is very uh, easy to port, uh, transport it is portable actually but this, the one which I have, you uh, know, in my observatory, it is, it is a little heavy mount and the uh, items are it is not that very easily transportable. But uh, still, you know, I uh, carried it for one, around one, one, one and a half year uh, to the dark sides and every alternate, almost like every alternate night I used to go with this mount, I'll set it up, bring them back and then in the morning. So I used to sleep in the desert. It, it was it was like that every alternate night. Um, so if you have that kind of passion, then you can uh, buy better. You don't uh, invest in small mounts. Go for the, directly. You can go for EQ6 or Pro, or you can have CEM 45P is there, or uh, CEM 70. It's according to your budget. Uh, CEM 45P is again a very nice mount. 
ioptron because i am see i am specifically telling all ioptron because you have an ioptron store there there is a dealer in oman okay uh, otherwise you see you have sky watcher is one good, good fine mount then uh, in celestron they have they have one c um, not c um, xg uh, celestron also they have one mount uh, in this uh, sky watch 20 kilogram payload uh, category um maybe this one i can uh, tell you if say if, if someone is asking me in my mail or my whatsapp i can let you know i, I can do a bit of research on this and i can, I can um, let you know no problem but maybe at least you have to spend um, for maybe a, for a beginning with your uh, for uh, tracking uh, you can, you need only this much maybe have, maybe a thousand hundred of money real maybe you can start it uh, provided you have a no need for bottle fire one sky you can you, if you have a bottle four sky that is enough bottle five five four uh, will be enough because here we don't have bottle five four uh, one we have bottle five only so bottle five is more than enough for uh, you can do it in bottle five and carrying this one will not uh, be a big issue this is very light you know and this one is no needs any power external power source this has a eight hour uh, battery backup i think this kind of small mounts have eight, eight to ten hours uh, battery backup um and uh, can hold the six kg maximum but uh, one thing you have to buy uh, and like you know additional counterweight maybe i think let me let me show you that Uh, this is not additional. Actually, this comes with uh, this comes along with this, not this uh, uh, ball head. Actually, this comes along with this with the mount. Uh, but same, similar like Skywatcher. Also, it comes uh, with the counterweight and the counterweight bar. Uh, so this is like that. So you can use this once. And you can uh, do the, uh, you can load your uh, camera on this and you can do photography with this. And this one, uh, same, all this sky watcher, this range of uh, sky, this sky, uh, size of mount trackers. And you can use this for guiding also, because this one is sky guider, actually. That is a sky tracker is there. There's a little more, a smaller one. This is sky guider. And uh, sky in, um, Asis, do you have any idea what is that sky watcher uh, guide star, star, star sky guider called star adventurer yeah sky sky watcher star adventurer is there that is also a very nice option actually to begin with all these are falling in the range of uh, 500 dollars uh, so with that you can start in normal it is 160 reals star adventurer huh? no sky guider pro ah 160 reals huh? Uh, but it is actually 500 yeah 500 uh, dollars only uh, yeah less than that uh, i hope uh, if it is 161 real yeah uh, 500 plus maybe uh, maybe another 30 very real very for the tripod special tripod but if you don't want that it's fine no need for the, the, this one all scan you know you don't need a big uh, very uh, stainless steel tripod for this this because your mount is going to handle maybe this one is like you know see maybe three or two two kilos two two and a half kilos this one will be and the counterweight all this the, this will be like maybe five six kilos hold this thing and your mount will be like another uh, your camera and uh, your lens will be maybe another uh, uh, four five kilos uh, so 10 12 kilos uh, capable payload uh, if you uh, tripod if you have maybe 20 kilograms uh, capable tripod of course wildlife photographers if you have a big lens uh, you will be always all the photographers i think we have very nice tripods so with that tripod this is uh, this uh, that those tripods will handle this not necessary to have a stainless steel tripod that is actually uh, another thing is you know that one is not that easy to handle the stainless steel tripod you have to it is not that easily portable. it is again heavy the tripods you have to carry it but this our carbon fiber tripods are very easy to handle you can uh, take it anywhere 
No need for the tripod, actually. This is to my knowledge, to my, because I don't have a tripod for this. I use my regular tripods. Uh, maybe you can see, like I'm using a bent rope, okay. Uh, even I have this Chinese, Chinese tripod. So see this one, this can handle. What is this? What is this? Zooming? Yeah. You see, this, this, this tripod can handle this. This is zooming. I am I am using this tripod for this. This one also. So it's not necessary to have a uh, stainless steel tripod because I have I have used this. So and uh, stainless steel tripods are very heavy, and uh, this one these are all very uh, light tripods. You know, carbon fibers are very easy to handle. Means uh, in equatorial mount and all is not required in that case. You may say which one? The equatorial mount, what you mentioned earlier, that is not your normal type of canvas. Uh, no, 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 no. Equatorial mount, that will come when you buy an equatorial mount, it will come with the tripod actually. Along, okay, okay. Back yeah, yeah, it will come with the tripod because that one, it, 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 our mounts can, our uh, telescopes, can, our uh, tripods cannot handle that. Mm -hmm. That needs a uh, very sturdy mount because the mount alone will be 25 to 30 kilograms. Okay. And you will have a counterweight for that. Uh, so my mount is uh, most like 25 kilograms plus again, uh, uh, how much this, um, the counterweights I am using 10 kilograms of counterweight, counterweight bar is in uh, two, two, almost like 30, 30, uh, 30, 40 kilograms is your mount. Then above that you have uh, equipment will be like another 15 kilograms. So it, it should be like 50, 60 kilograms of uh, load you have to always carry with you okay yeah from where yeah. actually you buy it actually this is from I mean, in qatar actually the as you mentioned there's oh, no, 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 no. Or any uh, astronomical shop or any so many society or somehow how, how you buy it actually genuine nothing, products basically yeah. nothing here in qatar actually I, I i am buying everything from uh, europe and us okay some uh, some of the shops, I, I'm not try, buying through Amazon also. Uh, there are so many people who are buying through Amazon, but I'm not buying from Amazon. I am buying it through directly from the retailers, uh, from their websites. Same uh, with Oman as well then, I think. In Oman, actually, uh, there is one shop, but actually astronomical solutions company, but they are concentrating on only in one brand, actually. They are... Uh, okay. Uh, giving only this ioptron they have they don't have skywatcher they have uh, because your collection is less but you are uh, the the product is available actually they are uh, dealing with uh, william optics uh, telescopes and this ioptron uh, brand mounts and uh, zw cameras actually ioptron is one ioptron and william optics are some premium quality stuff actually okay it's, uh, these are also these are very nice actually it's not like uh, that bad they're very good actually. and uh, in fact i have a i opted on cm 25p and i have william optics uh, Z, zenitsa 61 actually as that is my daughter's uh, kit she's also into this so that's very portable this one i bought from uh, uh, oman only i uh, from astronomical solutions Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If you want to go for other brands, if you want to try, like you know, if you want to compare the prices or uh, some uh, options, then you have to look for other options. Maybe you have to choose online. Fine. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, any other questions, please? I think that's it. Uh... Okay. Yeah. Hi. How are y'all? Thank you so much, Ajit Ji. It was a lovely session. Can you hear me? Am I audible? Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. Okay. It was. It was a wonderful session. It was long, but it was so exhaustive, and you've covered such a huge gamut of information. It's. Uh, it's. In fact, it's a lot to absorb right now. I think we need to. Yeah. Uh, luckily, Libin has recorded this, so we'll be able to play, replay, play, replay. And I think we'll need some more sessions from you as time goes on. So looking forward to a very, very, very fruitful relationship between you and FSO members. Sure, sure. I'm always actually, actually uh, yeah, I'm also an FSO member, you know, since maybe 2011, 12. 
Please, we'd love to see more of your images. I mean, they are really wonderful, absolutely sublime. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> Great. So, thank you so much, Libinji. Can you please uh, take over from here? Yeah. Thank you, Ajit, uh, once again, and uh, thanks for everyone who joined this session. And we'll have more uh, session uh, coming up. Thank you. Have a nice uh, weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Ajit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.